16, 1 Kings chapter number 16. I want to begin a series of messages this morning, if the Lord will allow us to do so. And uh, it may or, might, may or may not lead over into homecoming. I've not, not decided yet. I may have to switch up that Sunday or uh, just hadn't decided what we're doing yet. The Lord hadn't given us that. But I want to begin a series of messages on a very important man in the Bible uh, that many of you know about and that I've preached on here, there, and yonder, but I don't, uh, to the best of my remembrance, I've never preached this whole series of messages on Elijah. Uh, Elijah's a very, you know, a very great man of God, and, and uh, he is noted over in uh, the next chapter, chapter 17, verse 24, the widow acknowledged him as a man of God. Uh, and the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God. So Elijah is a man of God. And uh, before I get into the message and start preaching, I better go ahead and have a word of prayer. I get real excited when I talk about Elijah because uh, we'll see some things that you'll realize he's just like you and me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I pray that you bless it. God, help us as we read it. Help us as we study together. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. God, may we leave here this morning encouraged. God in the Lord. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Ver chapter number 16, this is the story leading up to the introduction of Elijah, in which we find most of his, uh, most everything we find out about Elijah uh, in his ministry is in First and Second Kings. Uh, Malachi mentioned him. I believe the book of Matthew does. And, of course, James mentioned Elijah, and yet his ministry is very short as it pertains to Scripture. doesn't last a long time, but he has great influence on the lives of people even today. Verse number 28 of 1 Kings chapter number 16. So Amre slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, Begin Ahab, the son of Amri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Amri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Now listen, this man, Ahab, was the most evil, wicked ruler of that day. If the Bible very plainly tells us that he did evil in the sight of the Lord more and above than all that were before him. Well, that's how kind of wicked man Ahab was. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Zidians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. So he married a wicked woman. A wicked man marries a, a wicked woman. And, and boy, I could really take off on that, but I'm not going to. Uh, but we see that in our country many times today in our leadership. But anyway, I'm going to go on. And uh, as, as he married the wicked woman, uh, they became an evil pair. And so that was what was, was reigning uh, in this day. And they worshiped Baal. That was their, uh, that were, they were an idolatrous nation and they worshiped Baal. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Again, we see <coughs> that Abraham, or, or, or we see that Ahab did more to provoke God, did more against God, did more evil in the sight of God than all those kings that. Uh, you know, that was before him. So we see a very, a very w evil and, and wicked man. In his day did Hiel the Bethlehite build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Ab Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his young name Zegab, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Now, take off in chapter number 17 and verse number 1. <coughs> And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now, here is the introduction of, of Elijah. 
Nowhere do you find Elijah mentioned in Scripture until you get to this verse. And he goes before King Ahab with all the boldness of a man of God. He goes before him without fear, and he tells Ahab, <coughs> As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. He said, Ahab, it's not going to rain again until I say. Now you're talking about boldness. You're talking about boldness and, and, and confidence in the God of heaven. Elijah was that man. Now had Elijah had any uh, concourse, had he, had he talked any at all to Ahab previous to this? Did he know him? Maybe he had. He was a man of God. He may have told Ahab, listen, you better turn from your wicked ways. I don't know, but here's what we know. Here's what we know for certain, and he was bold enough to go before Ahab and tell him, it's not going to rain. Now, who is this man Elijah? Who is this great man Elijah? Now, I picture him as being a very, uh, a very healthy man, a very strong man physically, uh, a very, you know, a, a, a man that knew how to handle himself, so to speak, and a man of great courage is this man Elijah. And we see some things about him that the, his ministry, uh, although it was over <clears throat> 3,000 years ago, he's said to be the greatest prophet uh, between Moses and John the Baptist. As John the Baptist came on the scene preparing the way of the Lord, uh, here we find that uh, Elijah is one of the most prominent, if not the most prominent, prophet in the Old Testament. And he had great power with God, and there's some things that brought him to that great power with God. You know what we need in our land today, for him? We need Christians, we need believers that have the power of God in their life. God help me. We need preachers that have the power of God in their life. I hear a lot of, of teaching going on uh, today, and they call it preaching, but it's teaching. We need preaching today. Amen. We need the preaching of the Word of God. Now, I need to be taught, and I like to be taught, and I read after other people that are teachers, and I study other people that have great knowledge, and that's good and well. But, friend, I'm telling you, what our nation needs today is the preaching of the Word of God. What, what Israel needed in that day was the preaching of the Word of God, and they needed someone that was bold enough to stand up and proclaim what thus saith the word of God. And, Ahab, and, and Elijah did that before Ahab. He said it's not going to rain. According to his word, it's not going to rain. Where did he get that knowledge? He got it from God. God told him. God proclaimed to him that. So even though his ministry is short-lived as we know about it, his name means Yahweh is my God. His very name suggests that who his God was, it was Yahweh. It was Jehovah God. That was his, uh, you know, that, uh, that was his name. And again, we see that he's a man of God over in, in uh, verse 24 of chapter 17. Now, he made this great announcement to Ahab. And again, we think what boldness it took, but we find he had some weaknesses like all other men. We find out we can learn so much from this man Elijah who lived 3,000 years ago. We can learn a lot. From this man. See, the Bible is never outdated. The Bible is never, uh, you know, never too old for us to gain all the information that we need in this present day that we live in if we want to be a Christian. Amen? If we want to be a believer, if we want to be people of God that serve God, that make a difference in this world, we can learn what we need to know from the Word of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to make a difference. Somehow, I want to make a difference in this world that we live in. I want to make a difference here in Mars Hill. I want this church to make a difference in Mars Hill community that there's a God in heaven, amen, and we don't have to go the way everybody else does. We need to have a revival in our midst, amen. And God knows how to do it. God knows how to, to, to uh, stir us and to move us to revival. And it will be because there are some Elijahs in the land, amen. It will be because there are some people that are, that are willing to do what God says. Now, <clears throat> in this scripture, Elijah says, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. Dennis, come up here a minute. 
Come and pray me. Come and pray me. He's a big old boy. So I'm going to stand up here. Because I'm not as big as he is, but I am now. <laughs> now face to face, Elijah stands. And I believe it's like this. Turn around here. I believe it's like this. And I believe Elijah said to Ahab, before the God that I stand before, it ain't going to rain. And I don't believe he smiled. I believe he said it with all seriousness. And I believe Ahab stood there and took it in. This is not uh, right against wrong. This is evil against, against what's good. He's evil. I'm carrying the message of goodness. Not really. Elijah was the message of goodness. Ahab was the message of darkness. And Elijah wasn't afraid to stand face to face, toe to toe with the king, look him in the eye, and said, it ain't going to rain. You go sit down. But you get the picture. He wasn't afraid. He had no fear of standing before that, that great king Ahab, the wicked. Is, listen, the wickedest man that had ruled Israel had the wickedest wife that had been in Israel. And they were rulers. And guess what? He wasn't afraid to go. How much, listen, how brave are you? How brave are you? Now, I was able to do that and stand before Dennis right then because I know that I had the door I could get out of if he got mad at me, amen? I think I could beat him to the door. I think he's got a couple of years on me. I believe I could beat it to the door. But listen, friend, how much boldness did that take of Elijah? How much confidence in God did that take of Elijah? I tell you, friend, it took a lot of confidence in God Took a lot of boldness, holy boldness in himself. It took a lot of courage. But he was willing to stand that and to show that this is a place of, of uh, right against wrong, faithfulness against treachery, and purity against corruption. Corruption being Ahab and the purity of God's righteousness in him was Elijah. Now, there are some that say, well, I could never be. Elijah, and I'll tell you something, I'll, I'll tell you what, this, I'm never going to get this message preached, but I want to give you as the way of introduction, I want to tell you who this message is of, on Elijah is going to help. It's going to help me, I promise you, every time I study it, I get encouraged because Elijah was a great man of God. But if you are here today and you feel that everything is too hard for you to do in the service of God, these messages are going to help you. You don't want to miss it because if you think, well, I can't do it. You know what the devil's main, uh, you know, uh, main jab against you when you want to do something from God? You can't do it. The devil says you can't do it. It's, it's too hard and you can't do it. So the, if you think you're here today and you can't do something for God or God is, has wanting you to do something that's too hard for you, you remember, Elijah was one man against, uh, at the time, he was one man against the wickedest king that had ever ruled Israel. Is anything too hard for God? Oh, my friend, if you think you're in something you can't handle, remember, God's a big God, and through Him, you can handle it. So you need to listen to the messages on Elijah. Second, if you feel like maybe you're the only one trying to serve the Lord, these messages will help you. Elijah said, I'm the only one left. And that's how Elijah felt when he stood before wicked uh, uh, King Ahab. He felt like he was the only one left. I only, he said, I only I am alone. In the thousands and thousands of people, he thought he was the only one left standing. You ever feel like you're the only one left standing? Well, I'll tell you something, friend. As we will see with Elijah, that there were 7,000 more that hadn't bowed the knee to Baal. We know, friend, even though the devil might want you to think that you're standing alone, remember, you're not alone in the battle of serving the Lord. Amen? You're not alone in the battle of living for the Lord. Because there are many others that have not bowed the knee to the Baal of this world that have not bowed their knee to the gods of this world and to the corruption of this world and to the evil of this world. 
We live in a scary society that has turned their back on God. We live in a society where, where men have become, uh, you know, have, have become wimps and there's not really many good men left in the world today. That says a lot, but I'm telling you, do you know our armed services is having trouble recruiting people into the armed forces? The biggest reason is why is because they're not, when they get there, they have to turn them down because they're just not qualified. They don't have the qualities of being a soldier. Heard that this morning. That amazes me. They've been raised in such a way that they don't have any, you know, they don't have any knowledge of, of anything except what they've learned doing this. Video games and texting and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and chitter and, and bitter and whatever else goes with it. <laughs> Driving down the highway yesterday, I got to watching people that I would pass. And man, I passed them too. I come back quick yesterday. And about probably, probably over 50% that I drove by, I got to looking for it. I'd glance over at them. Not a clue in the world that I was passing them. And in some of them, we're doing this. Driving down the road. You're going to die. You do that, and your chances are good, you're going to die. But they do it anyway. Listen, we, we've li we're living in a society that's so computer controlled that where's the good people anymore, amen, that want to serve the Lord? Where's the good men anymore that want to go into the service and fight for our country, which is still, by the way, worth fighting for? Ah uh, Elijah knew that if he was the last one standing, Israel was still worth fighting for. And he wasn't afraid to take up the challenge and go before King Ahab. So if you think that you're alone, remember, you're never alone if you've got God. And there's many more like you that want to serve the Lord if we'll just have the boldness of Elijah and stand up and say, I'm going to serve God no matter. Number three, if you're one that has waited on God for a while for something, if you're trusting the Lord for something and you feel like, well, God's never going to do anything, God's never going to answer my prayer. I'm sure Elijah felt like that from time to time, but guess what? God answered his prayer. Amen? Elijah put his faith in God, put his trust in God, he followed God, and God met his needs, and God answered his prayer. So if you're one that feels like, that you know, that, that uh, uh, you know, you, you, you're just not going to make it, remember, God answers prayer. Stay with God. Stay by the stuff. Now, how many of you would admit that we're living in an apostate age? How many of you got your hand, heads in the sand say we're in good shape in our country? Nobody. I don't think. We're living in days of apostasy. We're living in days where men have turned from God. We can stick our heads in the sand and say, Preacher, it's not so. Everything's lovely. But listen, open your eyes and look around. We're living in days of apostasy, and it's easy to throw your hands up and say, there ain't nothing I can do. What if Elijah had done that? What if Elijah had said, nah, I can't do nothing. How many great victories would have been turned into defeat if Elijah had said, I can't do anything? He thought he was the only one, but he was willing to make his stand for the Lord even though he thought he was the only one. If you think here today, if you may feel like there's little you can do, remember, Elijah may have felt the same way, but he thought, I'm going to do what God wants me to do no matter if I'm the last one. No matter if it makes a big difference, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. If we had the courage if, if everybody in this building had the courage to say, I'm going to do what God wants me to do, whether anybody else does it or not, I'm going to serve the Lord. If everybody had that attitude, there's no telling what God will do here at Gabriel Creek. Amen? A little boy walking along the 
seashore, and I thought about this while I was sitting on the, on the beach the other day, fishing rod in hand, one eye closed in sleep, one eye halfway open. And I was thinking about this little boy that was walking down the beach. There was a turtle nest <coughs> right up the beach from us. And they had it staked off, and they said that they're going to come out in the next, they had a time, next day or two, they're going to come out. Well, they can't, I was thinking about that. You know, they say many of those little turtles that come out, they, some of them never make it to the water. Some of them, after they get in the water, are immediately eaten by other predators. But a few of them, they make it and they live and grow up. And I got thinking, well, if they come out while I'm in the daytime, while I'm watching, I know I ain't supposed to, but I'm going to have them get in the water. I was. I was going to pick all of them up I could and take them down there and throw them in the water. <clears throat> Might have been good fish bait, but I'm not that cruel. But this little boy was walking along the beach, and there were starfish washing up by the thousands washing up on the beach. And this little boy was walking down there, and thousands of them walking, just washing up by the thousands washing up. And this little boy, they were all alive, and this little boy was walking down, and he'd pick up one, and he'd throw it back in. He'd pick up one, throw it back in. Just as fast as he could pick them up and throw them back in to get them back out in the water, he was doing it. The man walked up and looked at him and said, Son, do you think you're really going to make a difference? Look at the thousands of these that are laying around here. How, you think you're really going to make a difference in throwing a few back into the water? This little boy reached down one, he put it up in his face, said, I'll make a difference to this one, and throwed it out in the water. Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. You might not make, think you're going to make a difference in this world, but if you make a difference in just one, amen, you've accomplished something. If you can encourage one other Christian, you've accomplished something. If you can win one lost sinner to the Lord, you've accomplished great things. If you can pray for one lost sinner, you've accomplished something. Don't give up because you think you're the last one standing. Serve the Lord. And then last of all, if you think you've failed and God could never use you again, you ought to be encouraged by Elijah. And we'll see that in the messages as we go along. We'll see the message of Elijah and how that he was a failure, but God used him anyway. And if you're here today and you think, I failed too bad for God to use me, you remember something, friend. God can use anybody that will solely submit themselves to the Lord. That will give themselves to the Lord. God will bless you and God will help you. And God will use anyone that will give themselves over to the service of the Lord. So he prophesied to Ahab that it wasn't going to rain. And it did. He wasn't afraid to tell Ahab and give Ahab his instruction from God. And he stood strong before the Lord. Now, I'm going to give you, and I promise this, I, there's, I'm, I'm going to try my best. If I don't, I'll come back to it next Sunday. You remember these things about Elijah. Elijah was a man just like you and I are men and women. Elijah was just one man. There were no, as far as I'm going to get. There were no superpowers about Elijah. There was nothing in him that differentiates itself from you and I as far as who he was. He was a man. Just like me. Just like you. Ladies, just like he was just a man. He was, he, you know, he just wanted to do what God said. Just a man. He wasn't born with superpowers. He was just a man, just like you and I. So friend, I tell you, God is not looking for superhumans to do his work. He's looking for willing people. He's looking for people just willing to serve God, willing to do his will, willing to follow his plan, willing to pray, willing to read the word of God, willing to commit their selves to the Lord. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for that in me. He's looking for that in you. Are you willing to commit yourselves and your ways? To, as Elijah, are you willing to commit your ways, your life, yourself to the Lord? Father, 
Lord, we thank you for the word of God today. Lord, even though we got not past our introduction. God, you know what you're doing with these messages. And I pray, God, you'd help us. And you bless us around the word of God as we begin to study in the life of Elijah. God, give us boldness. Give us courage that we might live such a life in this present day of apostasy. We're thanking Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one.